There's a great story that I want you guys to hear. So I'm going to invite Jamie Fox to come up real quick. Um, Jamie's going to come on up, Jamie. Um, Jamie's going to come up and, and share a little story with us that illustrates the sovereignty of God in the, in the simplicity of, of, uh, of the ways of God. So Jamie, come on up. Come on up around here. We'll talk this morning. Good morning. You did great. <laughs> You're fine. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Nervous. <laughs> um. Hi, mom. <laughs> Is your mom watching? Not yet. Yeah, Jamie. I've got. Let me pull up my questions for you this morning. Why don't you just? Would you just tell us a little bit about um, what was your life like before you met Jesus? Um, what was going on in your life? Tell us a little about that. Just um, real, real, right. real briefly. Okay, real brief. You were going through a dark season. Very. And tell us about that. I was very reckless. Hold that mic yet, right there. Yep, go ahead. With myself, not just physically, emotionally, um, instead of doing, well, whew, I wrote notes too. Okay, instead of comforting myself in a positive way, I turned to alcohol, prescription drugs that were prescribed to me, so I said, right. But no, um, I was just really deep then. I took my life over. Granted, I've been, I dodged bullets so many times where I should have been dead, but I was saved every time for crazy reasons. I couldn't figure it out. Um, I was really angry with God. I grew up as Catholic. I knew God existed, but I never really knew what his plans were for me. Yeah. You got into a really dark spot. Can you tell us about that day? Yeah. So, crazy story. Um, I had my medications all saved up, enough to take me out. Just in case it didn't take me out, I had a, probably like a big jug of bourbon, because that was my drink of choice. Um, and I was ready. You know what? Who cares? This, if I end this all, um, the pain's going to end. Suffer's going to end. Nobody's going to care. And God would understand. I mean, that was like the only time I really said, you know what? He'll understand because he loves me, right? Um, but for some reason, I decided to call the crisis line. If this one person I've never met can convince me to stay alive, I'll stay and I call, and I talk to this lady. She had the most calming voice, and she just sounded so sincere. And she said, hey, you matter. I just want you to know that you matter, and things will get better. And I don't know how it's going to get better, but it will get better. And the fact that you're having so much encouragement to wanting to end your life says a lot about your will to live. And it would hurt me if anything will happen, like, happen to you. So, like, after a while, she goes, hey, what's your name? And I said, hey, Jamie. She's like, hey, I'm Raven. Nice to meet you. And that was it. Um, about a year and a half later, um, I just started, like, a home-based business. And this lady. Let me interrupt. Yeah, Let me interrupt. Uh, just to catch people up to speed, because some of them are just waking up this morning and going, wait, did, did I hear you say what I thought you just heard, what, what I thought I just heard? So you got into such a dark place in your life mm -hmm. that you were considered taking your life. Oh, yeah. By God's grace, you called uh, Centerstone Hotline. Yes. And a young woman named Raven answered the phone. Uh -huh. And that night, somehow she convinced you not to take your own life. Yeah. Sometime after that, you Googled churches and you found real life. Well, so we Googled um, the closest church to us, six minutes, and I didn't really, I never heard of real life, to be honest. I've heard of Awaken, Life Point, so, but it was Bruce that said, hey, why don't we try this place? It looks cool. It has an arcade. I was like, oh, sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you know, we said, if we don't like it, we'll go on to the next on the list. But now we fell in love, like, the first day. Like, so, yeah. 
And, and can you tell us about your journey of finding Jesus here? So first day, this man right here, he started talking about, hey, don't fake. Don't stop pretending. God loves you for who you are. He knows exactly who you are. The more you try to pretend to be someone else, the more you sin. And I was in the back corner, just bawling my eyes out. And I like looked at Bruce and I said, did you pay him off? Like, did you tell him about me? Like, what's going on? Is this like a therapy session, like intervention? What's going on? But I just knew, it's like, you know what? That's what I need to hear. That's what I've been doing, you know, like instead of like pretending to fit in or please toxic people in my life, I was on that journey mentally and here he was saying that and that was it. I was like, this is our church. This is, it wasn't just him speaking to me, like to all of us. It was God speaking through this guy, like, well, this pastor, this person. So, yeah. You went to we the are. bathroom. You were bawling in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. So I. <laughs> Some strange lady play, prayed for you. I was in there, like by the sink, just crying out loud. And I could tell somebody was in the stall and she could not come out. And I felt terrible. And I was like, I need, to, I need to do this. I need to put myself together. But she and Benjamin came out, and she's like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm crying because of, you know, A, B, C, and D. And she's like, hey, can I pray with you? Can I pray for you? I'm like, yeah, sure. And, she, you know, some stranger during COVID, you know, time, she hugged me, and she held my hand. She just prayed for me in the bathroom. You know, and I, I'm sorry, but I do not remember your name. I know we exchanged names so many times, but I love you. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And so, Jamie, would, would you say it was on that day that, that the Spirit of God convicted you of sins and you opened up your heart in faith, or was it a few weeks after? No, it was, it honestly was the first day. Yeah, yeah. it really was. So amazing. Yeah. So the first day you attended real life, the Spirit of God spoke to you about the love of God. You became undone and opened up your heart and faith to the Lord Jesus. Yes. Yeah, so amazing. Right on, church, right? I mean, that's what God does in this place. Yes! Real quick, though, I wanted to put Kim Pierce on the spot. I wanted to thank you because she was the welcoming call party, and um, she's been helping me through so much. And she's like a Tinder date I never met because we did not meet for months in person. So we knew everything about each other and here we were on the land on the church's birthday. So I just wanted to thank you. Yeah, we've got a phenomenal team of folks. If you've visited real life in the last two years, you got a call on the first day you attended from somebody like Kim, where's Kim? And, um, and they just call with a welcome. Um, but you guys talked for two hours that Oh, day. yeah, we did. And then you talked for a month before you met each oh, other yeah, on the like land. Oh, yeah, like just texting. Yeah. It's like sending pictures. <laughs> we like to say that every, every Sunday is somebody's first Sunday at Real Life. But sometimes every Sunday is somebody's first day at Real Life and stepping into the kingdom of God, right? So that's so cool. Um, Jamie, you've begun to grow in your relationship with God through... Can you tell us about that? I don't have much time, but... It's all um, right. So first big major change was my relationship, like her, well, romantic relationship. There's Bruce, we're getting married next Sunday on his birthday. Um, we went from, well, yeah, let's get married. We were engaged to be married, but we never had a set date. And once again, Friday, um, he didn't force us. He just kind of asked, are you guys sinners? We're like, Maybe a little bit. I mean, how are we sinning? You know, we're two grown adults. And he's like, you know what? I'm not here to judge, but I think you guys should get married. I mean, if you're engaged, what's stopping you? And um, we prayed about it, and here we are, set the date. And tell us know, about your community group. My community group was amazing, by the way, guys. Uh, we eat really good. <laughs> we really do. And our leaders are Jim and Ellen Gustin the coolest people you ever meet. And we have a very diverse group. We really do. And we are taking two more people in, if you're interested. Um, what kind of spiritual encouragement have you oh, found in your group? So Jim, 
the first day of our community group meeting. Um, Bruce actually left a day after our first meeting for a few months, thanks to the Army. And he asked Bruce straight up, do you guys pray together? And he's like, we're like, no, we don't. That's like a very private thing. And he told Bruce, you're a priesthood of this household. You're a leader. You're the man. Lead. Why right don't on. you do that? And, you know, while he's been gone, like, they even, they became our family. And at that point in time, Bruce wasn't sure that he wanted to follow Jesus. He was still iffy. Um, but this yeah. morning, you sent me a message that said, Bruce wants to get baptized today as well. Yes. Is that right? So, so awesome. So cool. When I, when I got to visit with Jamie and Bruce at Golly G's one day, Bruce, he wasn't even sure what he believed about God at all. And look at this journey that he's come on. Um, so as we lean into the sovereignty of God in Christmas, I want people to get to hear about the sovereignty of God in your life. And so you live in Hereford Farms? neighborhood. Yeah. So as that neighborhood was being built, we drove through that neighborhood praying for the people that would move into those houses. And now here's two of them in our midst. They're going to be baptized today. Pretty cool. Um, tell us about your business and how Raven comes back into the story. Okay, so food business. Um, I love serving people, but um, I also don't like to serve people so much. It's been a lot of work. Anyway, so my second week in, it's been going great. This lady placed an order, and she came to pick up. And I somehow had some time to chit chat with her. And like when I heard her voice, it just sounded so familiar. I was like, oh, maybe do I know her? Have I met her before? And we just kept talking and talking. And she, I found out that she was a social worker. And she's like, yeah, I work for Christ, Crisis Line at Centerstone. And her name's Raven. And I kid you not, it was just like immediate. You saved my life, Raven. <laughs> Like, I don't know if it was, if you remember me, but um, I called you crying, wondering why I should live, and there you are. And I knew that it wasn't just her, it was really the Holy Spirit um, speaking, like, through her, and it was me. Well, not just me, but, you know, I own the Holy Spirit telling me, hey, live for her. And here we are, she's back in my life, and she actually did come to church real life. So let's lean into that. You posted a testimony on Facebook mm -hmm. about how amazing one Sunday was, and yes. Raven commented and said, is there somewhere I could watch that? Yes. So you dropped the link in, and then you said, I know it's a long drive for you, but you really should come this Sunday. Yes. Um, and she came. She did. She sat on the back row, uh -huh. and at the response time, what happened? Um... Do you remember? Yeah, I do. Um, so, you know, we all, we all had our eyes closed. And I, I did have my eyes closed, just so you know. Um, and I hear Pastor Freddie. He's like, hey, sister in the back, you're accepting Christ. First, I, he's done that before, but I never really knew because I, I never opened my eyes. It's a private moment. But I just had this feeling. I was like, it's got to be Raven. But I don't want to verge. And as we're walking out, um, Freddie, he's like, hey, I'm Freddie. I was like, well, this is Raven. He's like, so you're the sister that accepted Christ today. I was like, whoa. Um, and which made Jim Gustin cry like a baby. <laughs> made me cry like a baby. And um, so she's been, she's been wanting to come, but she works from like 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. still for the crisis line. So it's really difficult for her to wake up in the morning and make the drive, but she's been watching online, and she really wants to get involved. Yeah, so good. So I want to invite you to stay after to celebrate Jamie's baptism, Bruce's baptism, and four other people's baptism today, but church, don't miss this. A decree went out from Caesar Augustus. <laughs> and Joseph and Mary headed to Bethlehem. And Jamie got on the phone prepared to take her life and a woman named Raven answered the phone and either randomly or providentially through a loving God expressing his sovereign power 
Raven puts in a food order from Jamie. And she comes and picks it up. And they form a friendship. And then through this friendship, Raven comes and sits on the back row and gets saved herself. Friends, God's not forgotten about you. He knows every burden. He knows every disappointment. And in his sovereignty, he's working for your good. Jamie's life is a testimony to that. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we give you glory. We are in awe of the great things that you do. Thank you for King Jesus who came as a baby. This Christmas season, we worship him. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Let's stand to our feet, church. Let's sing out.